After the smoke cleared, it appears one coup leads to another. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan may or may not have been the victim of a coup by a small minority of military leadership this past Friday. The biggest elephant in the room being, had Erdogan been the target, he would have been taken out easily. However, as Michael Snyder of End of the American Dream writes, if you are going to conduct a military coup, the very first thing that should be on your list is to decapitate the current leadership structure. But even though hundreds were killed and approximately 1,400 people were injured during the short-lived conflict, not a single high-ranking official was killed or captured. And Reuters reported, at the height of the attempt to overthrow Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan, the rebel pilots of two F-16 fighter jets had Erdogan's plane in their sights, and yet he was able to fly on. The, quote, coup, end quote, had begun on Friday, July 15th. Erdogan was on holiday on the coast. Meanwhile, a war zone unfolded in Istanbul and Ankara. That night, soldiers ordered state television to read a statement declaring that the military had seized control. The Telegraph reported the military stated it had seized control to reinstall the constitutional order, democracy, human rights, and freedoms to ensure that the rule of law once again reigns in the country for law and order to be reinstated. But as Turkish newspaper Hurriyet reported, several soldiers have said that they had been told that they would be taking part in a military drill and that it was only when people began to climb onto the tanks that they realized they were involved in a coup attempt. On Saturday, as the Erdogan coup subsided and another coup against the educational leaders' justice system and religious leaders of Turkey was ignited, after speaking with Turkish officials, President Obama made a beeline to go play golf. Meanwhile, Obama's ally, Erdogan, proceeded to hunt down one head in particular related to the root of his prospective dictatorship, Fethullah Gulen, an aging Turkish cleric, a major influence on the overall narrative of opposition in Turkey, who now resides in Pennsylvania. Erdogan is now asking President Obama to return Gulen back to Turkey to silence any opposition to Erdogan's forthcoming full-blown dictatorship. The BBC reported, more than 1,500 university deans have also been ordered to resign and the licenses of 21,000 teachers working at private institutions revoked. The Army, Judiciary, Security, and Civil Service have all been targeted following Friday's coup attempt. 6,000 military personnel have been arrested, with more than two dozen generals awaiting trial. Nearly 9,000 police officers have been fired. Close to 3,000 judges have been suspended. Some 1,500 employees of Turkey's finance ministry have been dismissed. 492 have been fired from the Religious Affairs Directorate. Turkey's media regulation body on Tuesday also revoked the licenses of 24 radio and TV channels accused of links to Mr. Gulen. When you pull back the curtain on Erdogan's regime, the clear indication that a growing alliance between Erdogan's administration and ISIS has quietly been germinating. Daniel Pipes of the Washington Times writes, Kurds, academic experts, and the Syrian opposition agree that Turks estimated to number 3,000 and foreign fighters, especially Saudis, but also a fair number of Westerners, have crossed the Turkish-Syrian border at will, often to join ISIS. What Turkish journalist Gadri Gersel calls a two-way jihadist highway has no bothersome border checks and sometimes involves the active assistance of Turkish intelligence services. In actuality, the Turks offered far more than an easy border crossing. They provided the bulk of ISIS funds, logistics, training, and arms. Turkish residents near the Syrian border tell of Turkish ambulances going to Kurdish ISIS battle zones and then evacuating ISIS casualties to Turkish hospitals. Indeed, a sensational photograph has surfaced showing ISIS commander Abu Muhammad in a hospital bed receiving treatment for battle wounds in Hatay State Hospital in April of 2014. One Turkish opposition politician estimates that Turkey has paid $800 million to ISIS for oil shipments. Another politician released information about active duty Turkish soldiers training ISIS members. Critics note that Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan has met three times with someone named Yasin al-Qadi, who has close ties to ISIS and has funded it. Essentially, Turkey, a majority Sunni Muslim country, but still a secular country, home to Turks, Jews, Greeks, and Arabs, is transforming into an ISIS stronghold under the newfound popularity future dictator President Erdogan gained after his, quote, coup, unquote. John Bound for Infowars.com.